Hi everyone and welcome to the Simply Colorful Fibercast. Today's date is October 3rd, 2015. It's a Saturday morning and my name is Lynn Marquardt and I thought I would just pick up where I left off last night on Fibercast. So hello everyone. I'm still making dolls. And what I wanted to do was, oh, and we're already dinging. I wanted to record this episode and say hello to you because I won't be here next Friday night because I'll be in West Virginia. So think of this as an early Fibercast for next Friday night. But who knows, we may do more. Anyway, as of last night, after last night, I finished this one head. And I purposely made her head tilted a little bit so she has some whimsy. I think I am going to create, well, we'll see. I'm bringing her to Textile Tarts today and learning how to paint her face. So that's one. That's done. I didn't do any more. Here is my other one that I sewed. So I will just keep that. I'm bringing all this fabric with me, and who knows, maybe I'll learn how to paint flat faces and then make them into dolls, although that's probably not a good idea. Anyway, that's done. I wanted you to know that. My Tilda doll. So that's what I'm going to do now for the next 60 minutes, maybe 50 minutes, because I do have to go to my textile tarts meeting. My Tilda doll, I don't think that it's going to work to have this silk fabric on such small pieces. So I'm going to continue, but I'm going to change gears just a little bit. And I'm going to pick a contrasting, what I'm hoping is a gold, to go with this red. And this red will still be the skirt of my Tilda doll, but building in the body, I'm going to use cotton instead of this thicker fabric. So that's my plan. As you may recall, last night I had made these two arms, and I tried to turn them inside out. And I just don't, even if I could successfully turn them inside out, I, I know how fabric works. And I just don't think it's going to give me the nice smooth look I want on her arms. So chalk that up for learning. Throw that away. And I want to clean up my tools a little bit. I don't need my stuffing forks from last night. I'm going to put that down here. I don't need my turning rods or even my Nymo thread or my pliers. So I'm going to put that away. Oh, and my hemostats. I did make a mess last night. <laughs> I don't know what you all did, but after Fibercast, I went downstairs and I made myself a pizza, just what I needed at 9.30 at night. But it tasted good, and I left the rest of it for the boys who were playing band in the basement. So it all worked out well. I could hear them laughing last night. Okay, so I'm going to put these away. These are my Tilda, just as a reminder. Online, you can find many Tilda patterns. Definitely check out the books that Tilda has. And um, that's what I'm using. And now let's pick, and basically, just as one more reminder, on the Tilda patterns, you're actually we're actually making the doll and we're making part of the costume at the same time. So instead of the whole doll being a flesh tone color, Literally, the head will be flesh toned, but then her bodice is going to be the color of the top of her dress. And originally, I thought I would do it in this red, but I'm going to keep the red just for the skirt. And I think that I want to do her bodice in something very contrasty so that maybe I can do an overcoat in the red or something. So I'm thinking maybe that gold would work and it'll pick up the gold in the. So that's what I'm going to use. Anyway, same thing on the arms. We're going to make the, the gold will be that top part of the arm. And on her leg, we're actually going to sew in some petticoat. So the top of her leg will actually be white, as if it were a petticoat or a, yeah, petticoat or bloomers. Then we'll see flesh, and then we'll see black for her shoes. So that's what we're making. And we have oodles of fabric here. I'm going to put this away. I just plugged in my iron. And I just figured it made sense since we are all here together. Since everything was out, it just made sense to me to do another fiber cast. And 
I also discovered last night that I have to create two patterns for my arms because her arms go in two different ways and this freezer paper only has wax on one side. So literally, let's see if I can see that. No, I'll have to trace that. And this doesn't have to be exact, that's for sure. What are you working on today? It was so nice to see everyone's emails last night. In fact, I have one from Marquet that she sent, and for some reason, she sends them like at 8.30 during Fibercast, but for whatever reason, they don't really reach me until after 9 o'clock, or I don't see them in my feed. So we're going to try and fix that, and I will make sure to read you and show you her progress. What a hoot, too. Marquet, I love this. I love how connected our world is. So there I was playing with you from 8 to 9, and then when I went to bed with my new iPad, I watched Bonnie Hunter's recording of her fire, not her quilt cam last night, and sure enough, I saw she was saying hello to you, so I love that. We're a connected community. That was fun for me. Okay, so now I have two arms, right and left, and I'm using my paper scissors to cut them out. And basically, what I'm wanting to do is create fabric that has the multiple, pe multiple colors in it from which to cut out my doll patterns. So on these cutouts, I literally have drawn dotted lines so that I can line up my fabric where it needs to go. And it may seem like a lot of work now, but I know that this is going to pay off in the costuming side. Oh, and there's Allie. And that was the other thing. Marquet said she could hear Allie barking in the background. Sorry about that last night. I can't say there's been much news since I talked to you all last. Isn't that funny? It's still raining here. <laughs> and it's now Sunday in Australia. So nice to have people from down under joining us. Oh, and I got a nice note from Peggy. Peggy down under, our first fiber caster. She's our honorary first fiber caster. And she wrote to say hello. So it's so nice to know you're all out there. Peggy, as you may recall, makes those just amazing, oftentimes double-sided, scrappy quilts. She's amazing. And she has her room set up. I don't know if she still does, but early on when I met her, she set up her sewing machine near where her husband is, and I think she's able to do it while maybe the TV's on, or they can both keep each other company at night, so it works out great. I have two sewing machines downstairs near Bob <clears throat> that I definitely could do at night, but I can't say that I've done it much recently. I did it, a f well, not a few years ago, a year ago or a year and a half ago. But since then, so here's what I'm doing. I, don't, I hope you can see this. I'm literally placing my leg on top of part of the fabric I've already made. So each of these four is going to be a front and back of each leg. And I'm placing the pattern where the top of the boot ends. And then I see that the part of her leg that's going to show is only going to be that big. So I'm actually going to, to make it easier on us. I'm going to approximate that and cut away this extra fabric. To allow for the seam allowance, so I cut I didn't cut away enough, but that's okay. And then for her bloomers, I'm using this white on white 
It's always difficult to find the right side. Do you ever find that? There we go. It just takes a little time. It's doable. Okay. So I'll give it one pin. And same thing. Right side here. Okay. I'll give this one pin. I'm going to do a very heavy seam, meaning not a scant quarter inch, but probably a more like a three eighths inch. And all is said and done. Okay, and I was so glad last night my bobbin didn't come out. Or, I mean, my bobbin thread didn't run out. Oh, and I put back in my thread cutter. Remember last night it popped out? Okay, so here we have the makings of the shoes the little leg that you're going to see, and then her bloomers. Now let's see if, yeah, that will work. That's a little bit shorter, but that's okay. Do the other one. <laughs> I tell you, don't sew as I do. The sloppy sewer. That's going to be my name. Actually, I'm going to do it twice because my seam allowance was just a little bit too little. Even though she's going to be a little dull, I am probably going to try and pack her pretty tight. I was originally, and I guess I still am, thinking that I'm going to use her on my tree for an ornament. But if she's going to be 8 inches long, she better be really skinny and not too heavy. Otherwise, I don't think it'll be as... I think it'll be too big on my tree, but we'll see. This is all a grand experiment. Okay, so there's that. It's a making of her first leg. And here I am so, I'm, I'm ironing toward her flesh. I may regret that though. That doesn't matter. Okay, so. Now, let's try this. Sew them together, or we'll pin them together. And actually, I'm going to cut one right off. So there's one leg. And then this one, because I want to see if maybe I sewed them crookedly and I can make the bigger legs go with the bigger legs. <laughs> there we go. That fits rather nicely if I do say so myself. And now I'm ironing on the freezer paper. And I will pin her leg at two ends. Okay, so there's one leg ready to go. So till, my, till, my first tilde is going to be imperfect as 
are all human beings because the flesh on each of her legs is not quite the same size. So now what I do is I make sure to turn my sewing machine down to 1.4, meaning the stitch length. And then I literally get as close as I can to the freezer paper and I sew around the contour. Now I can already tell you that when I'm sewing around the toe of the boot here, which is black, and I'm using this white, or actually it's pink flesh colored thread, once I turn that, we're definitely going to see a few little pieces of the thread show through. So that's going to be a perfect application for, and you know what I'm going to say, our black Sharpie. Just to tinge the few white thread fibers that are going to come through. Okay, now I'm going to show you this and then I'm going to do it again. And I'm going to show you why. Hopefully you can see this. Can you see the stitching around the bottom of her foot and how it's not quite even enough? Right in there, there's a little bump. So this is the perfect time. Actually, you can see it better on the back. You see that? So I'm going to sew her again, her leg again. And I like to sew double seams because I know I'm really hard on the fabric when I turn it. It's just my nature. I don't have very good fine motor skill control. In fact, I was thinking that as I was banging around in the um, bathroom this morning. My poor husband, who was still sleeping, I'm just not very gentle on things. Okay, beauteous. Now, I'm gonna take these off. I'm rolling over my pattern, I'm gonna do that. I'm literally going to take this off and put it on our second one. And on this, on the feet, there's no right and left leg, which is kind of, I, I'm liking this about Tilda. I like that she's a little bit primitive, and yet you can dress her up to be very fancy. I kind of like that. We can let our imagination go wild on making her realistic. Although I definitely like realistic dolls, too, so... I have to tell you, it's so fun to find something that is new to me. I hope you all get to experience that with your art, your fiber art. There's one, and there it is at the front. I'm going to do one more. I can take out the pins now, of course. Then we'll go back and do the arms over. Now that I've cut out two new patterns, that should go very easily. Okay, I'm even going to save that and put it in an envelope. And then literally, just cut across the top, leave about an eighth of an inch seam allowance, because she's a little doll. 
even that's going to end up being bulky. There's one leg ready to turn. There's the other leg. And there's the other leg. Okay, there are two legs. Now, for the arm, she's going to have the top will be yellow, the bottom will be flesh. And we had some pieces of flesh here that I knew we could use. There we go. Oh, we need four, don't we? Front and back, front and back. Okay, there are the pieces of flesh that we can use. I like this as much as scrappy quilting because you really can just pick up a scrap and go. Okay, so those are pretty straight across. Now what we need is this very beautiful gold. Literally, again, same drill, I'm going to make fabric. Oh, and I can raise this to like 1.8. sewing right sides together. And this is a good application for chain piecing. Okay, so here we have our arms. I'm going to iron it toward her gold sleeve so that her flesh doesn't show any. There's that. Now I'm going to cut them. Well, no, I don't even have to cut them apart. Another use of webbing here. Okay, make sure they're lined up, and then I'll iron that on. So there's her arm. I'm just going to pin it once to keep it there. And now I'm going to do the same thing, making sure to reverse the, lo the location of her arm. Remember last night I tried to do this by being lazy and only doing one cutout? Today I'm taking the time. <laughs> All right, so there are two arms that we're going to work on. And man, are they little, and they're going to be a pain to turn. Oh, now I have to reduce the size of my stitch length to 1.4. And see how when you're doing like um, fingers, little tiny fingers, it literally can be start, stop, start, stop with your sewing machine. This is very forgiving because she is more primitive. I 
There we go. I think I'll do her again. We go back and forth. That might be Sarah. Who's that? Oh, it's work announcements. So part of my team is down in Monterey. Not enough storage. Ooh, that's interesting. It says, this iPhone cannot be backed up because there's not enough iCloud storage available. You can manage your storage in settings. How ironic. I work for a company that used to sell just storage. Interesting. I'm going to hold off and see if I can clean out my box. I discovered that I have 24,000 Yahoo emails unopened. I won the junk mail bonanza. I bet a lot of you do too. My company, EMC, used to cap us off, I think, at 10,000 emails unread because we also get junk mail there. But now, I haven't had a problem with that lately. They must automatically purge it off the back end. That's what I'm guessing. Because it used to be in years past, you would have to manage your own mailbox. Now they just kind of do it for you. Okay, so we're really going to cut that. Again, eighth of an inch seam allowances because this is such a little part. There's one arm. There's one. Let's do a second. Did I tell you I'm making good progress on using up my thread? You notice I literally am using a spool that I got from Joanne Fabrics. It's a quilting thread, I guess. I've had it forever and I'm just trying to use it up. thread. So I'm trying to, again, just use up all my thread and then buy a new spool of Aurifil. This is a thicker thread though, so it's working. So here's the other one. I'm taking off my two arms and I'm going to save that for another doll and then literally cut quarter inch seams okay so here we have her two arms her two legs and now we need to make her body and first we make the three parts of the fabric her head her bodice and her bloomers here are her bloomers have it on a very low setting, but that's okay. okay. 
set the scene. Okay, so her bloomer and her body. And now, same thing, I need to measure how far up. To do her body. <laughs> Those of you who are good pattern followers, you must be cringing at my. Okay, so now all she needs is her head fabric. And you know, I may get into big trouble because I'm, well, Ah, she's too little to worry about that. The direction of the fabric may come back to bite me, but I don't know enough about the direction of fabric. See the difference here? If I pull that on the diagonal, look at how stretchy that is. It doesn't stretch any way that way. And I know we've done this before, the weft and the warp, that stretches more. This is important when you put it through your GoPro. They teach you about that. Um, anyway, it's important and on bigger dolls, and probably this one too, when you're stuffing, because as you imagine, if you stuff it that way, it bulges a lot. So you can play with the shape of the face. You know, if you put it that way, then you'll have a fatter face. If you put it that way, you probably will have a thinner face. <laughs> Needless to say, Tilda will have whatever face she comes up with. It will be a mystery. reason why dolls, even the it, dolls come out differently, every one of them, even if you follow the same pattern, because of the, um, the way fabric works. I mean, you heard Bonnie last night talking about when she was making her hourglasses there, she was very careful not to stretch her fabric that was cut on the bias. She only was, was ironing the seams themselves. because it really does distort the shapes as I push down and distort the shape. <laughs> okay, now what I'm going to do, so now we have the front and the back of Tilda. I'm going to put her together like that, and then line up the seams so that her dress looks like a dress because it'll go around evenly around the front and the back. Yay! Looking good. I should easily be able to turn this one. The other, the arms and the legs, and I should be able to do the legs pretty easily. The arms may be an off-camera work because there's a little, probably a little cussing involved. A little consternation. Okay, now she is ready to be sewn up and around. I have a small stitch length. Okay, the truth be told, I just kept her neck a little bit wider than the pattern. Because the thought of turning her neck doesn't sound very fun. But this, maybe I'll go back and crisp it up. It shouldn't be hard, though.
literally going to turn her around and go back. Hello to Karen and Mom out there. I bet right now you're getting ready to go to the Bloomsburg Fair. If I had to guess. I think the last time I went to the Bloomsburg Fair was when Alexa was little. Or maybe, maybe I've been there since then, but there's a wonderful picture of my niece Alexa crouching down and looking at a cow at the Bloomsburg Fair. And she's, she's only the size of the cow's head. And she's talking to it. She's very cute. Okay, so there we have her sewn. Now I'm going to take off the pattern piece, use it again. I have a little drawer here, or a filing cabinet, that when I'm being good, which isn't all the time, I literally will make a folder for each project and I'll put these pattern pieces into an envelope. And sometimes, you know what, sometimes I do go back and reuse them. So, And I think that other doll makers do that too. They find a good sort of core shape that they like and they keep going back and then you can turn a core shape into any kind of doll you want. I don't think I've yet found my ideal core shape. <laughs> In doll making or personally. No, I'm kidding. Okay. I'm going to turn this puppy over and actually, no, I'm not even going to clip because then knowing my luck, she will bust out. Okay, so now I literally need to get my hemostats out probably. Ooh! See this? She's starting to come alive. Let me get my hemostats one second. Okay. Or maybe I won't even do that. I'll just use a pin. No, I'll get my hemostats. Another thing you'll notice online with these tilt dolls is oftentimes their faces are just a little rouge on the cheek and two dots for the eyes. So it leaves it to your imagination. And there are some wonderful clothes that people have made for them. Like there are a series of three tilts that are, all look like they're sort of going to the office, dressed up in like wool coats and very stylish. Some very stylish dolls out there. Now, the neck is causing me problems, just like I said, like I anticipated. Trying to get her head through. Oh, here we go. Hang in there. Okay. She's getting there. We'll do some fun hair. Maybe we'll make her a hat. She's really small, though. I don't know what I was thinking about. You can't do too much on these small dolls. So maybe she will be a good Christmas ornament. Pushing out her arm sleeves areas. Okay, so there is her body and her head and her lower. Let's see if we can do her legs.
would be a good candidate for some two. Sometimes you can go down the side. And hold on while you turn her. So I went down with my hemostat and I'm grabbing the side of the of her leg fabric. The only thing to caution here is I have torn fabric doing it this way. It's coming out a little bit. We're down to her boot. The hemostats are just so powerful that they will rip your fabric. You could use, of course, use your thumb. <laughs> Can you imagine the arms? Yikes. We're making progress, though. Oh, I just heard Bob. Here we go. There we go. Yep, sure enough, I can see the thread, but nothing a Sharpie won't fix. And there is one of her legs. See, so she's got that classic tilled shape coming together. And she'll just sit right down. Okay, so let's do the other one. I'm going to give this a good iron. Oh, that didn't work. Huh. My iron crinkled up her foot. Hot, hot, hot. Okay, one. Let's do the other one. So I'm, I personally am thrilled to have spent this time with you because I'm getting a lot done before I go paint my faces at Dolly Club. And fortunately, I did my food shopping a few days ago, or yesterday, no, Thursday. And I don't have to work work today. I have to do a newsletter tomorrow, and then but that doesn't. Oh, see what I just did? Ah! I just stuck my hemostat right through her bloomer. So we're not going to panic yet. Uh, I'm going to go back and see if uh, it's repairable. So, and it is. It went right through that, right near that seam. All right, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue with this leg. Worst case, I'll just make another. But that's an example of how powerful these hemostats are. And how, once again, I'm kind of heavy-footed. I must just put my, my body to the metal, and I... <laughs> oh, boy. Darn it all. You know what I think part of it is? People would say I'm rushing, and I, that's probably the truth. I just like to get things done so I can move on to the next fun thing. 
but now I'm trying to be very gentle with my hemostats and just pull out a little bit at a time. There we go. I'm down to her boot. Once I turn this, I'll go get Marquet's note to us from last night so we can see that. And there have been another, a couple of other notes that I forgot to read to everyone. Again, Peggy from Down Under says hi. Okay, we're getting there. It's a little stubby, stubby shoe right now. The other thing that you have to be careful of is overstuffing. You can really get a log jam. If you're trying to go through a thin area, it's better to just try and pull a little bit at a time rather than kind of tamping all the fabric down there. Then you're really stuck. Now what's kind of cool that I think would be fun to play with is paper clay can be used on top of fabric. So we literally could make Tilda, make this body, and then if we wanted to, I don't know, maybe put more definition into her shoe, we could literally use some of that paper clay and put a shoe over it, like a heel or a, the makings of a boot lace, boot lacing. You could even go up to her face and put a nose on her. Not that I really want to do that. Okay, we're getting there. There we go. Ooh. And again, we can see some of the, the pink thread, which again is going to be fine, and it will really show once we stuff this, but that's where our sh the Sharpie and paint will be our friend. All right, leg number two. Let's give this puppy a nice... Okay, there's a little blowout right there, but I'll fix that probably with fray check and then maybe some thread. And you know what I'll do? I'll put lace around it. Now I'm going to Iron her body. I hope you're having fun working on whatever project you're working on because I know I am. I'm just going to put these here and pin them just to give you a feel for what it looks like. <laughs> I guess this is one of those ta da moments. Oh, that's fun when you, she crosses her legs. So, my Tilda doll is coming together. Her legs and her body. She'll have this kind of a, well, we'll see. We'll see if that's going to be too, we'll see how she turns out. Um, when I turn her arms, they'll go there. But before we start that, let me go see if I can find Marquet's note to us all. Okay. 
Yay. Oh, good. Oh, we have some new folks. So, Marque says hello to Lynn and the Fibercast gang. She's working here in rainy eastern Kentucky tonight. She's on her new Singer 301 with a knee controller. She says it's so fast and she loves her. But even though she learned how to sew on a knee controller, she said it's take, taking a bit to get used to by using her knee again, again instead of her foot. I know what you mean. I learned on a knee. My mother had a knee. But she's having fun. She loves the quilt behind me. Thank you. Speaking of my mother, she made it with my sister. It's a wedding gift for Bob and me. And by the way, our anniversary, our 16th year anniversary was yesterday. So I thought that was fitting. And it just looks so fallish, doesn't it, with the sunflowers? I love it. So thank you, Marque. She says, I hope you're enjoying, she says to me, I hope you're enjoying your vintage machine and I hope some of the information I sent you was useful. It absolutely was. Thank you. It was incredibly useful. She says, enjoy your weekends. Pictures are below. Maybe we call this new machine Bandit Marque. I think that would be good. Check that out. She's a beauty. And I can hear Allie. Fortunately, I can't get her up here in front of the... Hi, Allie. Hello. Oh, she's wagging her tail. Peggy said hi. Let's see. Super. Hi, she asked a question. She says, why not have two fabrics together when you sew around the heads? Couldn't they then be ready to turn out? Okay, let me see if I understand the question. Why not have two fabrics together when you sew around the heads? Couldn't they then be ready to turn out? You can... Hi, Allie. Hmm. You probably... This particular pattern, if I understand super the question, could you just make a head out of two pieces? And you can. This particular head is made out of four pieces of fabric. One, two, three, four. Because it'll give us more dimension on all four sides. If you just used two pieces, a front and a back of the head, you wouldn't be able to get as much definition out the front, if that makes sense. You'd have more like a Charlie Brown head or like this tilde head, right? This is a front and a back. So that's a good question and definitely dolls are made with front and back all the time. This is just maybe a little bit more complicated because it's three-dimensional. This is going to be more two-dimensional. It'll be puffy when I fill it, but that's a good question, Super. And is Super really your real name? Because that's a cool name. You're Super. And I think... Okay, now Deb C. just wrote, can't see what's going on. You're all blue and green. Is it only me? Oh, boy. I hope not, Deb. I hope you're there. Oh, oh, she says, oh, wow, I can see you okay if I don't watch the live. Looks, <laughs> I'm sorry about that. I am going to figure out the live streaming on YouTube, but thanks for watching the archive. Thanks for hanging in there with me, Deb. I haven't heard you for a while. I just saw your picture on Google, and I recognized your flower there. It's beautiful. Looks like you're having fun with your dolls. Have a great day, Lynn. Lots of fun. You too, Deb C. And on that note, thank you all for joining me. Have a great rest of the weekend and a great week next week. And until I see you on the next Fibercast, have fun. Bye, everyone. Uh-oh, can't find the mouse. Here we go. Bye, everyone. Thanks for joining.